This is Twit. Uh, by the way, 13.5 came out the day after Mac Break Weekly. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks a bunch. Of course. We're waiting. And uh, yes, the uh, COVID tracking API is in there. No, you can't do anything with it. So uh, I'll show you if you go into your settings and you go to privacy. Uh, be, can you zoom in on that a little bit? I don't know if you can, John. Yeah, oh, look at that. Look, he's got the amazing uh, miracle zoom. You go to privacy <laughs> and then you go down to health. There it is. If you've got 13.5 COVID-19 exposure logging and it's off by default, except that you can't turn it on because you have to have an authorized exposure yeah. logging app on there. Yeah. Once you do, you can see what exposure checks there are and you can delete the exposure log. And of course, this it turns out this is uh, Apple's and Google because they create the API for Android in conjunction with Apple's desire to keep it really private there's no personal information connected your exposure log isn't sent to any authority saying oh leo's got covid19 and and for that reason france and it looks like most states all but four states are saying yeah we're not going to use that they want okay i listened to the briefing they had a sorry mine just says not available in your region where the most afflicted mm -hmm. place in canada not available in your region <laughs> yeah. but they had a they had a uh, an off the books briefing on that and it was super interesting because the they some of those places badly want location data and apple and google are trying to explain to them like it, it, like it, it explains to me like i'm a 5 year old version of why you don't need the location data it is irrelevant there they they know how to do bluetooth they know who you're around there are still some problems like you pass somebody in a subway and they're standing on the platform you're no you're not there's no communication there but you were still near them so there's still like things that have to be addressed with this but every bit of data that could be useful for what they're trying to do now which is the notifications is available to them and there seems to be as just a sticking point in the mentality either ignorance because they don't know that they already have what they want or nefariousness because they believe that this is their gateway into getting something that they've never been able to get i'm gonna before. fight you on this well, to one. be I fair think, go yeah. ahead i'll let to, you andy but after that i'll i'll fight <laughs> to, 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 uh, to be to be fair uh, health organizations are of two have two schools of thought on this they do acknowledge that a solution like apple google's is going to be a lot more palatable for for the general public and the only way to make this sort of app useful to the community is to get 60 to 80 percent of the people actually installing that and actually using it but the other but the argument for having a centralized approach is that with that huge pile of data assuming that's only uh, even if it's only available to healthcare organizations you can crunch that data and uh, create brand new models that sort of anticipate how this uh, how this is spreading not just with people who have been diagnosed but people who have not been diagnosed a lot of this is community organized. Uh, Google released a really interesting tool uh, just last month uh, for uh, community leaders to basically say, here is, don't, please, please don't dig deep into how we have this data, but here is how many, uh, how active uh, people have been at your areas of public recreation, at shopping areas. Here's how much travel they've been doing within your town. Here's how much travel they've been doing outside your town and to other states. And that's the sort of data that can allow uh, a community or even a local government to decide, you know what, we believe now that people are getting it. We believe that uh, the correlation between the the numbers that we're seeing in new diagnoses and confirmed cases are related to how uh, well people are sheltering in place and following instructions. Therefore, we believe that we can ease our restrictions or create new rules. That's So that's the argument that they're making. But I, I stick to my guns in saying that I don't want this sort of, uh, I, I believe that if we, uh, we, we might have a Patriot situation if we allow governments to have access mm -hmm. to routine uh, no warrant access uh, to daily daily tracking that at first it will be to solve this immediate problem that absolutely affects every single person in this country and then it will be well you know what we do have this power to do this why don't we just say that terrorism or murder or drugs are, are a health problem and as such we will simply take access to uh, entire communities information about how people are moving around to do our drug enforcement and that would be almost impossible to roll back Lori, you have any thoughts well i guess the what comes up for me is the what the way contract trace contact tracing has traditionally worked which is that somebody 
contact contracts the virus, let's say it's COVID-19 in this case. And then there are there are health care workers who have to go out and physically go to all of those locations and tell, you know, the the restaurant or the grocery store that somebody that had um, COVID-19 was in this store at this time, at this date, so that they can put their procedures in place. They have to call up each and every one of the people that that, that, that person who contacted it um, came in contact with that they know of, they know them personally and can get into contact with them. So I think what might be happening right now with this desire to have centralized data is that that's how they've done it in the past. And it's like Renee is saying that- It's the only way that works, but go ahead. And that's why I'll tell you. That's why I'll fight all three. I'll yeah. fight all three. Well, so it's the, uh, like this, Leo, like it's this. the only way that you know of that works. And and I'm not even no, disagreeing it's with the this only idea way of centralized. That works. <laughs> Period. I, and we know it. Now, Latvia is going to do this. There are some countries that are going to use the Google API. But I refer you to Bruce Schneier, who is no laggard on privacy, who says, my problem with contact tracing apps is they have absolutely no value. I'm not even talking about the privacy concerns. I'm meaning the efficacy. The countries that have successfully stopped COVID, with that, there's no vaccine, there's no known way to do it, there's no treatment in hospitals. The countries that have successfully done this have done it in one way and one way only with effective tracing, uh, c testing and contact tracing. And that's human contact tracing. And the reason governments don't want to use what Apple's giving them is it's worthless. They could use as an adjunct for human contact tracing which I will repeat, is the only effective way. It's what South Korea has done. It's what Taiwan did. It's what China has done. It's what the countries that are effectively reducing their cases to zero have to do. It's what we will have to do, except we never will do it because we're too liberty-focused. Well, isn't there, focused. like, you can make that, right? Like, any anyone can make an app that asks for You could have an app, app that would like help government. human contact tracing, but you still need humans to go out, call people. And it's, you know what? It's really tough medicine. It will never do it in the U.S. You might do it in Canada. You'll never do it in the U.S. Because what it involves is I, I get tested positive. They say, tell me everywhere you've been in the last 14 days, every store, every restaurant, every person. They then go to all those places and people. They say, you now need to quarantine for 14 days. Plus, we want to know everyone you've talked to. Since you ran into Leo, but isn't the issue that they miss people because you don't know who you've it been in it contact have to be with? What the app is it doesn't have to be perfect. It has to reduce the R not, and it and it works, and it has worked in every nation that does it. It has. So worked. I'm confused. What's the difference then between the, the, this thing automatically reporting who you've been in contact with as opposed to you giving a like a verbal list? Well, I'll again refer you to the Bruce Schneil article. He talks about false positives, false negatives. He talks about. The idea that, con this is his final quote, the contact tracing can be done with an app and not human health professionals is just dumb. Now, I'm not as smart as Bruce Schneier. I'm not as smart as you guys. But if Schneier says it doesn't work, I believe so, him. And it's, it's just I'll tell you, thing, the though, countries right? that are, Singapore, where they've done a very good job, Hong Kong, where they did a very, very good job. Singapore, they had an app, 20% ad adoption rate. And it didn't matter because it was humans that made the difference. Now, an app could help humans, but that's why the governments want the information. Mm -hmm. that so the here's what I'm confused, though. It's like the, the arguments I've heard about the app isn't that they don't think it's going to be useful. It's that they wanted complete location access to everybody. And Apple and Google said no, and they're angry about it. But if the app doesn't work, then it doesn't matter if it gives them location data or Bluetooth beacon data because they, you know, it's it's not useful anyway. So in the end, the government still or the, the government still just wants an excuse to get our location well, data. I and at the least, Apple and Google are saying no. Okay, so excuse to get a location, David. Privacy, blah, 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 blah. I got it. Yeah. You have a choice. You can either stay in quarantine until a vaccine is developed, if ever, or you can have your privacy. But would they get? Would the app work if they had location data? Like, because if he says the app, no. apps don't work, you need humans, then it's irrelevant. No, it's if they the get same. It's a subway train issue. It's all of that stuff. Yeah. It, mm. it, 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 but the apps could be useful, and this is why most governments, including uh, all but four states in the United States, including California, are developing their own apps because an app could be useful in conjunction with human contact tracing. Yeah. But yeah. it's not by itself useful. Yes. And no yeah. matter what it does. And so, and so you need humans, and the app could be an adjunct to humans. But the ad, yes. uh, there's a lot of problems with an app anyway. And, it, it needs, and the needs. Apple app is useless, completely useless. Even with the uh, government I wouldn't say that. It? 
it has to, it has to be part of a complete breakfast is is i think the point every and, government and, uh, and, every and, health and, and, expert says this andy i'm sorry i'm yeah. going to have to stand by this there was a really good if you watch cnn last night uh, Anderson Cooper interviewed who's the guy who did the HIV stuff he's really really good he wears the German uh, jacket but he was very clear and very adamant on this you need human mm -hmm. contact tracing so yeah, if the apps don't work I, I don't, anyway don't, I'm happy I, they're I not getting my data while making them yeah. <laughs> it's a bottle for me Leo, I'm, not, I'm not sure if, I'm not sure if we actually disagree um, I, I, absolutely, I absolutely agree with you that uh, the, the, uh, the need for human boots on the ground processing uh, is has been underestimated and underappreciated uh, for 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 this crisis. A lot of this is, uh, you know, Rhode Island got into a lot of trouble for doing something that was proactive and very very uh, very very simple, which is to say, we know where the New Yorkers who own beach property, like vacation <laughs> property in Rhode Island, live. We know where the rental properties that attract most New Yorkers are. So therefore, we are going to like have people go out there and look for New York City license plates and then knock on a door to say, hi, are you from New York? Great. You, you do know that you have to quarantine who else you've been in contact with. That's the sort of stuff that we're going to need at a, at a much, much higher scale. Uh, I just don't I just don't uh, I don't think I think. Yeah, I agree with that. It would be useless if that's what we were all that we were counting on. I mean, this is this is going to be such a great says apps such a are test. techies doing techie things because they don't know what else to do. It is not well, useful. We need. We. I think we need every club in the bag that we can that well, we can use. Again, uh, and that's the, the other, true, and that's the, the why other. other the, the, that, that's why everybody except four states and a handful of countries is doing something other than the Apple Google thing. Yeah, well, it's the, and the and the other thing that we're not we're overlooking is that we have to make uh, we can't have a solution that requires someone to have a phone of a certain vintage in order to run. Uh, a lot of people are are using pay as you go phones on pay as you go plans. A lot of more people than we appreciate are using non smartphones. So a solution that requires people to have access to uh, a modern ish iPhone or a uh, Android phone that can access the Google Play Store uh, is not a great idea because it's going to it's going to it's going to uh, it's it's not going to benefit some of the people who are most vulnerable which are the people who don't have a whole lot of money and are very very dependent on being able to go, don't have the ability to say no when an employer is saying hey we're, we're we're reopening no we can't have masks no we're do, we're, we're we're putting together a plan for disinfecting surfaces but we don't have it together yet but if you want to you you can if you don't come in and start working regardless you will still lose your unemployment benefits so you have no choice so we have to make sure we have solutions that work for everybody you know obviously the notion of widespread testing and contact tracing is not going to ever happen in the United States. So the consequence of that is waves, more, many, many, many more people dying, waves of quarantine. Uh, and that's, and you know, we'll talk in a year. And nothing happens. We can't even get people to wear masks, people. Leo. We I know, like, we can't even get them to yeah. wear masks. By the way, masks work too if everybody wears them. Yep. Uh, but I still see lots of people wearing and selling masks that have valves that allow you to your air to <laughs> to go out, which is exactly the wrong kind of mask to wear. I mean, it's just you know you could you could get political and say that uh, leadership in this country has not been very good. That's part of it, but it's happening yep. all over it's the world. It's been terrible in Quebec. He's been changing his mind. We're opening all the schools. Oh no, they're getting sick again. Close the schools. We're opening the, yeah. oh, the, the places. Sick again. Close where, the places where it works is where the politicians step down and the health experts step up, yeah. and then yeah. that's who gives the briefings and that's who tells you what to do. And or when you I elect wish, people based on things that that involve uh, leadership and managerial skill. You, you look at New Zealand. You know, uh, excellent prime minister, but her real skill was letting the health experts decide what New yeah. Zealand does. Now it's easy in an island nation, and we're a very very large nation spread the hell out all over the place it's going to be very difficult we it also are founded on the notion of personal liberty so there's no yeah. way but we're we all wear pants this. leo like like, we wear, like the thing with me is like there's people going into stores yelling about their right not to wear a mask they're wearing pants they understand no shoes no shirts they were fine with that uh, but now we have youtube and everyone wants to be <laughs> yeah. but it feels like like dinosaurs were killed by a meteor from space and we're all going to die by a comet of our own stupidity that's right. just how it feels right. to me uh, anyway, I, I just want to, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to. I, I hear, no, I, I absolutely I think hear it's just really important because I think when you focus on the Google Apple thing, we miss really a much broader point. And I think Bruce Schneier convinced me uh, that, this, you know, he get, the, the article's really good because he gives the scenario. He says, all right, fine. Uh, assume you take the app grocery shopping with you and it alerts you of a contact. What should you do? 
It's not accurate enough for you to quarantine yourself for two weeks. And without ubiquitous, cheap, fast, and accurate testing, you can't confirm the diagnosis, so the alert's useless. Similarly, assume you take the app out grocery shopping and it doesn't alert you of any contact. Are you in the clear? Well, obviously not. You actually have no idea if you've been infected. That's a huge problem that yeah. I've got. Like with all, like I saw a huge article yesterday about saying how airplanes are safe because they like airplanes are very low risk. They're very safe because they circulate and filter the air. But you could be sitting next to someone who's infected. You could be sneezed yep. on by going down the aisle by someone. Like none of this stuff is being reported very well. Yeah. Here's an article from April 27th from the Brookings Institution. Contact tracing apps are not a solution. I mean, we can go on and on and on. Yep, I yep. think the health experts have been very clear about this. Uh, I trust them. And, you know, when it comes to technology, I trust Bruce Schneier. I'm not as smart as any of them. Yep. But uh, and, you have and, to know who to and, listen to. And, and the other larger thing, just relating it back to technology, is that we have uh, – the people who create the technology have the greatest amount of faith in technology. They don't understand when the when the when a whole bunch of people who have the means to uh, f money is the fuel for change, and that the pro programs don't get off the ground until you have money to actually fund them. And when a whole bunch of people got together saying, "How can we improve the lot of children?" The idea was, "Ooh, let's make let's find a way to make a one hundred dollar version of a five hundred dollar laptop." Uh, and that's that will help like children's education everywhere without instead of instead of having like the more practical thought of, well, well, how about we fund the creation of roads so that people so that uh, so that people can get from one place to another. Let's make sure that uh, that teachers are funded so that the, so that it's uh, and we, let's make sure that we improve the living conditions of the family so that these children so that uh, parents don't feel as though uh, they can't afford to lose their child for uh, for several hours a day. Uh, we the one of the biggest problems we have ongoing i'm talking about year to year to year is the the old adage that silicon valley is really really good at solving problems that can be felt by a 20 to 30 year old engineer making three hundred thousand dollars a year <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah